Brooklyn Nets, this could be one and done. It creates that narrative around this team. Kevin Durant says, okay, I'll come back to Brooklyn. I'll play. Kyrie has one more year left on his deal and his extension before you figure out, do you want to sign him to a long-term deal or do you want to let him go become a Los Angeles Laker? What does that mean for the future of the franchise with Kevin Durant? You have Ben Simmons, who just comes over to this team now, who's trying to find his way, coming off taking some time mentally. It's a one-and-done scenario, and it puts so much pressure on Steve Nash and this organization to win it this year. Can I say one thing this about year. that? Can I say one thing about that? When you go over this Nets roster, I'm just thinking of Ben Simmons as he played at his best in Philly, okay? Put that him at includes, the five. Okay, right. Or I mean, Ben Simmons really – when they play him the way they play Giannis in Milwaukee a lot of times, when Simmons, you're playing five out, and Simmons got ball in his hand, he's the point guard, and he's coming downhill, you have two options. You either double him, or he's going to yam it on you, or else, so, and, and it, sorry, he's, you either double him and he's going to find the open man. He creates more open looks from three than anyone since he entered the league. Or, or you don't double him and he's going to kill you inside. If, the, if Ben Simmons is that guy, with Kyrie Irving and KD and Joe Harris and Seth Curry, Jay, just by accident, they're going to win every game. Like, you know, and before, we, before we even get to all the hand-wringing, they got to stay healthy and the psychology and they need leadership and coaching and chemistry and this and that. It, just the talent alone on that team, if they're just on the floor together, is going to be hard to deal with. People are always going to bring up, well, how about the biggest question mark? Kyrie Irving. Can he be trusted? Just let me say this. I'm going to put this in perspective. I know some people will do this. Just think about, Max, the last three years, right? From us having George Floyd, in which a lot of – and I'm not making excuses at all. I'm just putting it into perspective. You're just describing what happened. There were a lot of people that weren't sure they wanted to go to work and deal with the repercussions of what happened with George Floyd. We had a lot of conversations in the black community about what are stances that some of our leaders should take in order to try to change this conversation. Now, I don't agree with every move that Kyrie Irving has done, but damn, I give him some credit for trying to lead something, right, in his own way, regardless of whether other people disagree with it or not. The pandemic, you and I have been on different sides of this. Hey, look, I know a lot of people that decide to take a year to say, hey, I want to I see what happens with this. That's just not something I would do. But I, I, I like medicine, but go ahead, yes. That's fine. You can disagree with it. You can call it whatever you want. This is, my, this is my take on it. I understand that, right? So I understand that comes, and there, there's some challenges communication-wise, right, with what happened between him and the franchise, but that's fine. But when he is on the court, he is special, man. So if Kyrie Irving is committed to basketball, I'll frame it the way other people like it to be framed, even though he's always been committed to basketball, and were to play this year with KD and Ben Simmons, those three players along, if you pick up some other pieces, Royce O'Neal, TJ Warren, you pick up some additional defensive pieces. God, their roster, I'm sorry. Their roster is off a, the chart. I don't think there's a roster that compares to theirs. Now, I, the, the reason you say, well, this team or that team is simply because of recent injury history, and that counts. But what I'm saying is if this team is healthy and available, they, to me, are so much more talented than every other team in the league because – if you look at the Lakers, right, who don't have as many shooters or depth that the Nets have. They don't have as many good players as the Nets. But the Lakers have a big three, okay? And I think Westbrook's actually become underrated. LeBron and AD don't shoot it like that. So you can't just put the ball in Westbrook's hands and say, do what, I, do what Ben Simmons did or what Giannis does for the Bucs, right? But the Nets... There's never been a player... But let's be honest. We're not talking about the Lakers when we go out west. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I know the Lakers are the Lake Show, it's L.A., yeah. Keys from L.A., but they're not the team in California. No, but what, okay, the but, goal, the goal, if we're going to compare a team to the talent of the Nets, but that's no, but Golden I'm, I'm, State and the Clippers. But what I'm saying is the, the Lakers have two unusually talented superstars. LeBron is maybe still the best player in the world, and AD is top six or seven still, and it, when they're at their best, they're better than that, right? That's what the Nets have in, in KD and Kyrie, but the difference is their Westbrook, Ben Simmons, is a taller, more in his prime, better passer, you know, that kind of guy, better point guard uh, in terms of 
setting up teammates, and the guys he's setting up, the other superstars in Kyrie and KD, are enormously talented, pure shooters, yeah, but, which the Lakers are not. But it's also the addition of something that Brooklyn has and that Golden State has and that the Clippers have and that Denver will have that the Lakers do not have is depth. That's the right, problem. But, but no, that, the, like, you're we, focusing on the Lakers. I'm focusing on the Nets. I, I know. I'm, I'm coming back to the Nets. I'm coming back to, to the, the Nets because I'm saying when you have KD and Kyrie and Ben Simmons, in addition this to Joe saying. Harris, to Seth Curry, to TJ Warren, that depth is what makes them the complete package. This is what I'm saying. Jay, when I think of the best shooters in basketball, the best shooters in basketball who aren't superstars, right? I think of Joe Harris and Seth Curry as two of the top five or six pure shooters who aren't superstars. When I think the, of the best shooters who are superstars, I think of KD and Kyrie as two of the best five or six pure shooters. They're all on the same team with a guy who's created more open looks from the outside than anyone since he's been in the league and Ben Simmons. Yes. If they're healthy, Steve Nash, all the hand-wringing about Steve Nash's leadership and what's the system going to be, they might just win by accident. It's going to be hard to beat them. You know why I have them as the third best team in the Eastern Conference? I don't trust in their leadership. So they have, all, they have all the talent in the world, but w w Harry Douglas just walked in, and he's staring at me because he's talking a lot of trash. Your mic is even on, Harry. You're not even supposed to be here. He's going to talk trash about the Braves. But back to my point about the Nets. The one thing that holds me up about them, and I think on, talent, on paper, their talent is off the charts. You need somebody that can lead a room of grown-ass men and hold people accountable. And if you don't have a player that demands that kind of greatness on a day-in, day-out basis, you better as well have a damn head coach who can. And I'm not sure in Steve Nash's ability to be that person. For this team. Don't give the Nets that coach. No one will win a game. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.